All right, hello and welcome to our season review of the entire campaign. Let's get into it. My goodness. Right, we we finished doing our awards ceremony. Uh, we've been Why are you, wearing, that? Why are you wearing a blazer, bro? Why are you wearing a blazer? This isn't a full well, one. I just, you know, just leave it on. Leave it on. A bit chilly in here. It's I not, get it. It's not. Mike uses blazers instead of jumpers at home. That's just that's just the way he lives. That's a that's a life choice he has, and that's just indeed, indeed it is. Uh, welcome in you. In case you're new to the channel, uh, be sure to smash that subscribe button and, and punch that like button. Does help the channel out tremendously. So um, we are going to be reviewing the entire campaign all the way from September last year um, through to Sunday last week. So, and how we're going to do it is we're going to mark out the months and work work our way through. Does that sound right? I'll be honest, mate. I put more research into the awards. So I'm, I'm just going to follow, I'm just gonna follow to your lead. Um, I'm going to remember the last few weeks real well, but uh, then, uh, then then it just gets all to a real angry blur for a bit. And then before Christmas, it was all good. It is. It is. Now, there was a big shout out for us to um, chat about the kit. So we should... We should... Mm just give that a quick shout out so um this is the new southampton strip <laughs> which i'm guessing we're all absolutely loving <laughs> i can't wait can't wait to wear it it's a stunning kit so i got the, the laptop here so i can actually because <laughs> my notes on the season are in that one but I'm guessing by your um, exclamation there, Jack, you're absolutely loving a new kit. Yeah, mate. And it's everything it. we wanted. It did a lot. Like, I have all the things in my head that I thought it could be, what I thought it might be. You know, when I think of the, you know, the uh, the, the, hum, uh, uh, the humble shirt that I bought earlier on the season, the one, the, the thin stripes and the red side. I didn't, you know, I didn't, didn't really, didn't really think about the anniversary of St. Mary's. And as soon as I realized, oh yeah. And I saw the kit, I was like, yeah. This looks fantastic. You know, I I love that first St. Mary's kit. I love that Lasdale red and white shirt. And it's just yeah. gorgeous. And to see it on here, it just looks good. Just looks good. I, you know, I don't hate the sponsor. The sponsor's fine. I, I love the, the arrows. I love the fact that all the stands are written on the inside. I love yep. the... Have you seen the fact that it's a QR code? What the whole front of the kit, or just each yeah, of you, those you, you, chevrons or what they're called? Yeah, you scan it, the kit, and a 3D James Ward Prowse turns up in your front room, apparently. Ah, look at that. So we are so far in the future. We got a VR kit, we've got Bitcoin, we've got first everything. One. First one ever. First virtual reality visual kit. I don't know what, what I don't know what, what it means, but I'm excited no. about it. But it's the first. So there we go. Is there anything yeah. you don't like about it? The only thing I will say, that collar looks a little heavy. I didn't like. I wasn't a fan of the the Liverpool and the the Spurs kits last season with that crossover. Nah, I've collar. got that. I've not got that saying other, that's any good. Not that's that terrible other, as well. A humble shirt and the collar on it being thick is fantastic. I love the yeah. thick collar. It's not like how they used to be when they were all dead itchy and they were really thick. They're a lot thinner and they're a lot softer than you might imagine them to be. Yeah, I love it. I, I there's. For the first time, okay, it's, it's brilliant. And we've seen that little maybe leak of the away kit, the yellow one. Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if that is the kit, but I would but I would imagine it probably also has the arrows in it as well, which would look awesome. I I think that's pretty it's, it, it's not gonna take a rocket scientist to work out that that's what the away kit is. You know, that they, they said they were gonna go with a sorry, I don't know where to put the computer. Um <laughs> They said they were going to go with the, exactly the same mock-ups as the first kits at St. Mary's. And I, and I think it's a little confusing because a lot of those kits around that era were follow-on kits and they were used for multiple seasons. So like the third kit, I think, was used for two seasons and then there was a crossover with the away kit it was used for two, se two seasons follow-up. And So yeah. but yeah, so um, What I would probably imagine it would be is the home, I'd be a, the, hopefully the yellow and blue away kit yeah. Then, it, then it, that's the, the question: Is will it be yellows? Will it be the black and red kit, or will it be the white kit? Probably the white kit, right? I'd love a white kit. I don't know. I don't think you would. I remember the first day I got that white 
away shirt, the one that's, you know, that we're talking about, that first home one. And I was at St. Mary's. I had it on. I was all proud as punch. And I had a big slurp of hot chocolate, burnt my tongue, dropped it down the front of that white shirt. And I had to go buy another one a few months later. (laughs) (laughs) So there we go. But all in all, we we are loving this kit. And do you know what? We probably will do um, something on the kits when they've all been uh, announced um, and, and go from there. Fantastic. So, uh, again, congratulations to Seven Hundred Foot Club and Hummel for putting together a new kit, which is hopefully we, we've seen in good time. You know, it's uh, we haven't had to wait months and months. And do you know what? It would be amazing if we can actually see a kit produced on time that we can buy before the season starts and it's got the right sponsor on the front of it. I think, I think, Happy days. There, like, we, we need to get like, we need to do that this season. It needs to be out and everyone needs to be in their hands pre August yeah. because. People are a little bit fed up and annoyed with that. I will say, a little, uh, you know, behind the scenes of our last video for off the pitch moment of the year, I did in fact put Hummel deal and sports bet deal just because I thought I just oh, yeah. kind of, kind of you know, I, I thought Michael probably say charity, so I need a different one. <laughs> right, let's get stuck straight into our season review. In fact, I've got a special, I've got a spe- of course, I got a special background. Boom, season review. Wow, he remembered to do it. Remember to change the background. Lucky me. Right, let's roll on back to September last year, and our campaign started away at Crystal Palace. Can you remember what the result was? Nope. It was a 1-0 disappointing loss to Crystal Palace on the 12th of September. Uh, Who scored the goal? Wilfred Sahar. Why was he out of James's pocket? Who let him out of James's pocket? I don't know. I don't know. I remember watching this game and it was very disappointing. Um, but there wasn't much in it. There really wasn't much in it. We were all losing our minds thinking, oh, why can't we ever win the first game of the season? Another slow start to the season. Um, I think that was the big takeaway of that game was, hey, don't worry, guys. We never win the first game of the season. That was just everyone's general agreement. It was. It was. And then uh, shortly after that, we had our League Cup fixture, uh, which was at home to now promoted Brentford, who um, I think a lot of us were thinking, yeah, we'll get, we'll get past this round. It's Brentford at home. We, we I can do, do this. I believe if you go back to the, that time, I did say Brentford are pretty good. I reckon they go up this season. There we go. There we go. So, Mystic Jack working all the way back then. You're, you're right all this time. So, but naturally, uh, unfortunately, we lost in the first round of the Carabao Cup for the second season in a row, I think, because we went out the first mm-hmm. season, first round of the last time as well. Ah, no, no one likes it anyway, do they? Apart from City. No. City and, then, and then that was shortly followed by um, the Spurs game at home, um, which we ended up losing 5 2. Um, now, I can remember the fan base absolutely going nuts over this and thinking, I mean, it was a terrible performance because effectively we were doing a high press without pressing and we just got caught out by Kane and Human Son. We actually scored first in that game as well. Um, yeah, that was the first of, that was like the first 9 0 fear game. Do you remember that was the first game where it's like he's done it again? He didn't change the tactics, did the same thing over and over again, and we were just exposed. And they, they, you're right, we were really really exposed in that game and yep. just son and kane absolutely tore us apart mm-hmm. that was the game where you know i think it did before but that was the game where everybody realized oh my god harry harry kane is also the quarterback he can also just blast that like just tear people apart and <clears throat> had to be us that it happened to but you know that was a bad game that was that wasn't that good. was that was but because yeah. we got the two goals there was a part of me that said the system works a bit. It's just that we just happen to come up against the most deadly strike team this season. Yeah, defensively it wasn't it wasn't good at all. And you know, mixed in with their the class of human son and Harry Kane. And then on top of that, we had the smugness of a Jose Mourinho afterwards, sort of talking about the quality of his players. But it, it was a, a good performance by Spurs, but we ultimately left the back door open. Um and then the following week we had uh as an eight PM fixture on Saturday night. Remember this? Uh Away at Burnley, our first win of the season. Uh, a 1 0 win. He's uh, got to go. A Danny Ings goal in the fifth minute. Um, again, 
there the wasn't much in this game. The, is that the one where he tried to round the keeper and then it just kind of like ricocheted off of him and went in? Yeah, he wasn't the prettiest of goals. Yeah, didn't make goal of the season. No, it did not. No, it did not. So ultimately, we got our first win. We're all quite happy, but you know, if we're honest, there was there wasn't a lot in that game. That could have gone either way, and uh, but but naturally, when you've got a result like that, uh, finally get three points on the board. Um, and Burnley were going for a period at that time where they hadn't picked up any points either. So, um, but no one ever seemed that worried about them, did they? Strange thing about it. So, uh, and then it was back to back wins because we went on to play against West Brom with 2 0 win with your Oro Romeo. Your what goals, a maybe. goal! Everybody was kung fu fighting. And I'm used to Nepo. For uh, in the forty-first minute, which in the was first also half. a great goal. It was a, it was it a great was, goal. Um, a, a turn and pivot into the bottom corner. Brilliant stuff from Gineppo. Yeah, uh, I'd like to see more of that. He needs to improve. Check the last video for <laughs> more details on that. <laughs> more details on that, indeed. And then we went into the Chelsea game uh, away to Chelsea. Um, Chelsea had spent loads of money in the summer. Um, we're thinking. Yeah, it's free hit. This was this was one of the the pay per view games as well. Do you remember that? You had to pay. So I went next door and sat with my neighbour, who's a Chelsea fan. And I was thinking, do you know what? It, it's 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 a not a must win game because we won two on the trot. And I was thinking, no, it's fine. And it, we weren't terrible in that game. We were we were definitely in it. But I think there were a few sort of Chelsea mistakes. The Timo Werner goal was scored with his hand. Um, that that shouldn't have shouldn't have been allowed um and then Vestergaard with the the header in the final minute to make it 3-3 so felt pretty smug after that one yeah that was uh uh one of those draws where you just like that was that might as well have been a win for us there you know mm. the team that it was it felt like a win on, it did feel like Southampton are on a roll now and it yeah kind of kind of where the role really started going for us a bit wasn't it yeah no it's very very good so um, yeah, it, it was it was that case. It was it was our run that then sort of took us took us on uh, an unbeaten beaten course there. But um, <laughs> so I had a funny joke about Timo Werner the other day. Do you want to hear it? Go on then. Um, they said that if Timo Werner had shot two pack, he'd be forty nine today. Was that? If Timo that. if Timo Werner had shot two pack, he'd be forty nine today. I mean. You're not wrong. <laughs> I'm not wrong. The most overrated player in the Premier League. Right, moving on. Um, so after the Chelsea game, we're still in October. Yes, we are. Uh, we went to... Well, no, we were at home to Everton. And got another win. A 2 win. Which it looked way more comfortable than I thought it was going to look. I think there was a bit of a... They, Everton had made a change in the left-back position. I think they had Ben Godfrey out on, on that side or Alan. I can't remember. I can't remember. But effectively, that looked really comfortable as a two tuna win. They had a uh, Luca Dean was sent off for that. Yeah, uh, I stamp that. on the back of. Um... Wasn't Richarlison out for that game as well? Was he back for that game? Oh no, uh, uh, Rodriguez was out for that game. One of the one of yeah. the big boys up top was that was out for that game. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but I think uh, when people look back over, you know, when. And those Everton fans had their great great grandkids about you know the glory years of Ancelotti Everton. Mm-hmm. They had to tell people, but we lost to Southampton. You know, <laughs> yeah. when Everton were the biggest team in the league for those eighteen months, and but not really. Yeah, Everton were were up a, up in the in the top half of the table. Were they top for a bit as well? They were top for a bit for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're at this point now. Who are uh, I mean, we've been talking about everything. Who are Everton going to get their, as their new manager? Seeing as Ancelotti just. Come mm. and left. Nuno in it. Nuno? You reckon? You reckon Nuno? I reckon Nuno. Now that I think Conte is going to Spurs. <sighs> Spurs need to get Poch. Yeah, but he's he's, he's, he's still got too much. It's almost perfect for Spurs because <clears throat> Poch needs to see out his contract really with PSG. He's only been there for how long? It, mm. it, it would cost everybody a lot of money for Poch to leave. So if Poch yep. can have another season, season and a half with PSG. Conte has a a year, maybe two years with Spurs to help them get, get in a better place. Yeah. yeah. I think that works for everyone. Maybe. Anyway, back to this. 
But it's this. So Southampton, Everton, we got two 0 win, and then we went away to Villa for that <laughs> that really bizarre game. Game of the was... season, do you mean? <laughs> it was yeah, game game of the season that we ended up voting for. Game of um, the season. A Vestergaard header, two James Ward Prowse free kicks, and and just when we thought it couldn't get any better, we score a fourth in the second half um, by Danny Ings, absolute worldy from outside the box, um, off the top of the crossbar, and straight into the corner of the net. So and then uh, nothing else happened that game. If everything just kind of yeah. played out, and nothing else happened. And uh, the, the game that should have ended four 0 ended four uh, three, which was rather rather. Funny to watch, really. Makes it exciting for the people at home. It does. Did they get they get two goals in stoppage time? It was two goals in stoppage time, they wasn't did. it? So you know, everyone, you know, they everyone got what they wanted. Uh, you know, Aston Villa fans got. I think Grealish scored, right? Grealish did score. Yeah. You know, got the same score, and we got to see Diallo kick him. <laughs> <laughs> everyone kicks Grealish. It just goes with it. And then we move on to that Friday night, the six. <laughs> Of November 2020, uh, where we Ings wasn't fit, was he? We had to change the system up completely. We went five at the back, like three central defenders and then two wing backs, completely changing the system. And uh, mixed emotions on. Uh, but Shea stepped up in the seventh minute to put us one nil ahead. And then in the 80th, 82nd minute, a Stuart Armstrong goal. Uh, giving us the tuna win and putting us at top of the Premier League table for the first time in the club's history. Man, what a mental season this was. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Think, think how high we were living then. Yeah. So many oh. aspirations, so many, we, we, you know, first time we were really seen blue skies in a long time. Like, this is great. We were oh. unbeaten since that Spurs game. So Thanks. since the 20th of September, all the way to the 6th, actually, no, all the way to the 23rd of November, because we were, after this game, we went away to sport, uh, to Wolves and, and got a point, got a point, which we could have got a win had Walcott put away more of his chances. Um, but we got a point. But to have that spell of being unbeaten for two months, do you remember when when people used to start football conversations with you like this? Life's good to be a Saints fan right now, isn't it? I know, right? And now <laughs> it's, it's anything but that. Yeah. I talk about football so much with my friends, but we rarely talk about Southampton because it's like we talk about all the league and it's like, do you, do you want to talk about it? I'm like, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> I spend at least five hours a week talking about it to a gang, gang on YouTube, but I don't need to let you guys hear it. <laughs> but no, yeah. back then, life was sweet, man. Life was good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um... How could it ever go wrong? Proceed with the fixtures. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Um, so, yeah, then we got the 1-1 the one, one away at Wolves, and then we had that game at home against Man United. Um, now, this kind of like was a bit of a reversal of something that we did to Burnley um, at home where officially we, we went 2-0 up. We went 2-0 up. And um, who, who was it that scored for us? Bednarek. Bednarek. Jan Bednarek. And um, sadly, we all know what happens when Bednarek scores. Um, no, we go 2-0 up. We don't know, all know what happens. It got, yes, wheeled in, it got wheeled into existence by the fan base. If we yeah. just didn't say it, we hadn't thought about it. If we hadn't created this ether, this black voodoo magic around the, the you know, in the ether, it wouldn't have happened. But we did that, and that happened. We looking back at this game, though, we we were outdone by United pace and class in the second half. I mean, that yeah. we Best. we could all see it coming, literally from the the Cavani coming on the pitch in the second half. We were thinking, oh my goodness. I remember distinctly being upset that we lost, but at the same time, it was like we didn't lose to cheap goals. We lost to very well worked, well taken, and well struck goals. It was the first, it was one of those first early games. I was like, cool, actually, Cavani might be an absolute peng signing for United. And yeah, can't yeah. argue with it, really. And, and in a weird way, I kind of would have wanted to be at the stadium to see that. It might sound a bit. 
dark to think in that way, but to see like the the movement of the Man United attacking players, like Cavani. I absolutely understand. I understand you where that, the ball's going to go. That sounds that's that sounds like somebody who wasn't at the Leicester match. That's what that sounds like. <laughs> you you see our pain and you're jealous of it. You're like, oh, I wish I could be really hurt like them. But instead, be... I was on my I was on my pink flamingo in Cyprus. But you don't you don't mind like. Like you said, if you lose a game and it's to horrendous, poorly defended goals and and it's just you've given the game away. But when it's like that, you kind of like go, fair enough, fair enough. You know what? You didn't. I make jokes, but you're not. You're not, not wrong. But the thing that's made me think of that most this season is Aguero leaving Man City. Mm-hmm. There's a part of me that goes, I hated seeing them getting that hundred points at St Mary's, and I hated, blah, 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 hated this, hated that. But I'm quite happy that I got to see that little legend play. Mm. And sometimes I feel at St. Mary's, you kind of have to be okay with being like, listen, we're not going to win today, but I am going to get to see some of the yeah. best players in the world today. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, like I said, my my little, uh, my, my, my aunt's and little cousin's got season tickets for next year. And my little cousin was so excited because he's like, does that include like, the big six teams? Do I get to see them? It's like, there is... You know, if mm. you love if you like football, it's still good to be a Saints fan because you do get to see some. Yeah. It's like it's like when Bamford scored against us. It was like, yeah, he's mugging me off, but I am. It's kind of cool that Patrick Bamford's right there mugging me off. <laughs> like, I suppose you pick Bamford of all the names you could have picked, mate. What? Who else did I see this season live? Oh uh, yeah, that's a good point. But that, I'm, I'm thinking that, previous that seasons. Helped. No, that helped. But no, I mean, like when we, like when, I remember when we saw our, actually the very first match day vlogs is us at the United the United game. Do you remember? Mm. That was the f- first one, and I think you know we saw Rooney, Mata. And there was just a few players that are on that pitch, and I was just sort of like, it's cool to see them. It's cool to see yeah, them, yeah. to see those people play. And I kind of get you know so there are there are those games where I'm like, like, like you say, it would have been cool, good to see that sort of play. You are right; it is amazing to see it. Yeah. In real life. I would have wanted to see Zlatan actually play at some yeah. I, I got to see Zlatan play at the, the Bernabeu uh, with R- Ronaldo and Zlatan on the pitch, and that was quite something to behold. I was way up in the stands, though, so they were kind of – they stood tall figures that were literally um, a long, long way away. But it was still great to see. That's what I mean. Like I've, seen, I've seen Ronaldo at St. Mary's. Like, that's, that's weird. Yeah. Weird. Was it Ronaldo? Have you seen Ronaldo? Was it? No, I haven't. I think it's sort of, like it might have been Van Nistelrooy era. That's what I was thinking about. It's all Van Nistelrooy there. I'm like, it's still amazing. So it's Van Nistelrooy. It it's is. just certain players. I'm like, oh, yeah. It is. So right, who do we get to on our list? We're into moving into December now. December. Let's change the graphic here, can we? I hope everyone doesn't mind me doing this. It just means that if you're scrolling through, you can find out where, we, where, where, which part of the season we are chatting about. So we go away to Brighton um, and pick up a two-one away win. Um, this was the the really weird handball decision. Do you remember that one where the, the ball went over the top of James Ward-Prowse's head and came down and and landed on his hand here. Literally, a ball came from the sky and landed on his hand here, and that was a penalty given against us uh, back when the um, <clears throat> handball rule was a, a little bit questionable. Uh, but effectively, we came back uh, with the Yannick Vestergaard goal on the 45th minute and a Tanny Ings penalty. Remember that penalty that was on Carl Walker Peters, wasn't it? And it was originally yeah. given as a free kick outside the box, um, but the foul continued into the box. Which I think we agreed with. Did we agree with that? Um, yes, we, we did agree with that. Yeah. But yeah, that I remember, I, yeah, I roughly remember that game. It's just yeah, the, that's when all of the uh, and all the rules are a little bit shaky still, wasn't it? Everything was. We were all still like, oh, I'm not sure about this. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But all in all, the season is still going rather fantastically. Um, Everything is going swimmingly well. We are firmly in the top half of the table. Happy days. Um, and then following on from that, we have our first game back in front of fans at St. Mary's that we didn't go to. I think it was a, a 2,000 allocation for... It doesn't, it doesn't, so we went there, it doesn't count. 
<laughs> uh, one thousand for legacy ticket hold, uh, season ticket holders, and then a ballot for um, the other thousand tickets available, uh, where those lucky, lucky fans got to see Southampton put three goals past Sheffield United. A emphatic display, uh, an impressive display, um, which was which was fantastic. I just seen it. Tom, Tom, we were so jealous, Tom. Wow, what a game to go to that would have been. Um, <laughs> me and Jack went to see a game at St Mary's and we didn't see any goals scored by Southampton. And um, yeah, we got Patrick Bamford literally in front of us doing this. Doing I this. also saw um, Alex McCarthy not dive at a shot. Yeah, not a good feeling that. We ordered extra food at Five Guys. Yeah, was, but the Five Guys was good. The Five Guys was good. Everything after that, apart from the road closure, everything apart after that game was fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a rough night. So then after that, we were away at Arsenal. And I think this is the only game I didn't watch live. So I don't know what happened in this game. I vaguely remember Walcott scoring. So Jack, any any ideas for what happened in this game? We, they had a, Arsenal had a player sent off as well, didn't they? Remind me of the score of this game. 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Yeah, so that was the game where, yeah... Theo scored, mugged, mugged every Arsenal supporter off by celebrating. And then, was it oh, yeah. uh, Was it Pepe that equalised? Lacazette? I want to say Pepe. Come on. Who got it? Um, Aubameyang. Aubameyang. <laughs> Gabriel I mean, got sent off. I knew it was somebody awful. <clears throat> yeah, I tried but that, that far back. What, 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 what a long time ago. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I remember. I I remember. I, to be fair, I rewatched that Theo goal today, and uh, it was a was a peach. It, 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 that was one of those finishes. You'd be like, why can't you do that all the time? Yep. Yeah, it was a good goal. It was a good pre, goal. Pre pre knock, you know, everyone was better pre knock this season. Yeah. Apart from Danny, Danny was better post knock. Yep. But post post knock. You know? So all in all, but but things are still very very rosy. Um, the only loss we would have had since the. 20, 20th of September was still that United loss. That's mad when you think about it. Literally, we are yep. firmly into December and we've lost three games all season. And two of them in the Premier League were in the uh, two of them were at the start of the campaign. That's how mad the season was. So that we then went on to uh, well, we had Man City come St. Mary's, and uh, I remember this game for one thing. Uh, it was only one goal, uh, Man City beat us 1 0. But the one thing that stands out for me in this game was watching Kevin De Bruyne take it to the corner flag to hold on to a 1 0 win. Yeah, and it was at that moment that I thought, Oh, like City are scared of our attacking prowess. So that that for me was a highlight of that game. A, a weird sort of feeling to lose 1-0 and still be slightly proud. Yeah, like it's like mate, like we say, being a Southampton fan, you gotta find the moments that are like there. That's a thing that's something to hold on to. And you know, you, the Pep City team that won the league this season without a designated striker decided that they had to put it in the corner against Southampton at one half of the season because they knew that we were dangerous. That's where we all have to remember. That's where we can be, and that's yeah. where we can go with what we've got. We just need yeah. to vastly improve that. Indeed, indeed. Um, so then, after that, we went away to Fulham, and uh, disappointing nil-nil result there. I always um, felt that that, being... that 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 should have been a game that we should have taken, <clears throat> and um, and 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 got something through. Felt like a waste of. Uh, a waste of two points that we we dropped on that on that fixture, and then after that, uh, the final game of the campaign, uh, final game of 2020, uh, was at home to West Ham, and I always felt in that game that again it would felt like two points dropped, but watching that game back afterwards, actually maybe we were a little bit lucky on that one. Yeah, I think you know we, we I think most people we all underestimated West Ham this season and what they could do and. Um, you could sort of when you look back at that game, maybe back then we thought maybe we could have got something out of it, but looking at it back, you're right. It's like yeah, fair you know, that's that, that mm. kind of that, that kind of scoreline is fair fair enough to the to the performance that we gave. And then the same for the repeat of it really. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then the first game of 2021, it started so well. It started so well uh, with a 1-0 win against Liverpool. And that was the first stream that you were actually ahead of me on. Do you remember that? Yep. And you celebrated the goal, and I was like, what? Shut up. You're having a laugh. And uh, Danny Ng said, uh, effectively, let's not also forget what Stuart Armstrong did in the sense of pushing... Hamrick, did you push Henderson? So he actually played Danny on side. Yeah, yeah. He was so he pushed Henderson. the line back and Danny was able to get in and effectively lob Allison. Was it Allison? Was Allison in goal? It was Allison in goal, yeah. It, it was, was. A cheeky lob over Allison. Cheeky lob. So what you're saying then is that we won when I was ahead. So that I think maybe. <laughs> I mean, luckily next season we should be watching it at pretty much exactly the same time at home. That's the hope. That's the hope. Yeah, that we can actually uh, get to get to the, at least all of these home fixtures, uh, which we have renewed to do so. So um, let's let's go with that. So then, after that game, Ralph broke down in tears, and I think I can't remember how many opposition fan channels we went on. And they said, "What was all that about?" With Ralph crying at the end of the game and having to explain to the fact that Ralph set out a personal goal and said to Jurgen Klopp, "said I am going to take points off you this season. I am going to." That that is my my goal, and he finally achieved it. So that is why he broke down so emotionally. Um, but it was an exhausting game to watch. That wasn't it. It was. It was really tiring. I, I think we all sort of felt the emotions at the end of the game, and when we we, we were sort of there cheering and screaming and shouting, and then you look at Ralph go doing that, you're like, he's with us. He's you know mm. he's, he feels exactly the same as we do. Which <clears throat> I see why people think. Can looking at it now. <laughs> just major meme isn't it it's just mm. you look at you look at that now and all i hear is the you know arrested the um all i hear is you know um the kirby enthusiasm theme you know that's what i hear now now i see it but at the time yep. it's like it at the same time like you can make fun of it but it is still kind of the reason why i'm absolutely behind him because i'm like he's he's with us he's a hundred percent when you when you think you're angry He's just as angry as he's more than angry. And you think we've seen the mistakes. He knows the mistakes as well. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, he, he knows what he he knows what's going on. He isn't like he isn't like Southgate where he's the last man in the pub to realise what needs to happen. Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. And and I think you know up until that particular point in time, we can't really fault anything that Hassan Hootle did. No, if you like look at, he, if you, if he even for the first two losses or the first three with the League Cup involved, everything that went on was just like. No complaints. None. How many points are we on at that point? Mm. It's approaching. Well, it's late twenties, wasn't it? Yeah, late twenties. What do you think? You think if you do, if you if you if he had just if we had a, a, a double that and achieved what he'd done again, if he got the rest of the season doing it in that form, <laughs> like think how like, think how crazy of a year we would, we would have been. Yeah, you finish above West Ham. Yeah, exactly, and. And especially given the, the state of the league was in, if we could have just stayed that to keep that consistency, like we would have all been that emotional end of the season. Yeah. But it just after that game, wasn't it? After that game, mm. our worlds just fell apart. The ground left our feet. It all went horribly, horribly wrong. Um, well, let's rattle through it. Um, it. We went away to Leicester, um, where we lost two nil. Um, I, I still think that two nil perhaps flatters them a little bit, but ultimately they probably deserve to win it with the chance that they had. Uh, we then had our FA Cup third round uh, against Shrewsbury, uh, which okay. felt incredibly comfortable. So much so, I think we were chatting about something else, weren't we? We did a live stream where we were talking about, I can't remember what it was, but we weren't 100% focused <laughs> on the game. I remember the Lindelou scored, and that was good. Yeah, yeah. So we had Tuna winning the FA Cup, progressing through to that. Um, and actually, that, that game had to be postponed, didn't it? Because we had the fourth round only a few days later against Arsenal. Oh, yeah. Uh, where we won 1-0. Um, where <clears throat> Arsenal fielded a slightly weakened side, I think, in their opinion. But... I think it was down to Aubameyang had to go somewhere for family reasons and effectively yeah. um, wasn't involved uh, that much. But we progressed through the fourth round, beating Arsenal, and then only a few days later to lose to them 3-1 in the league. So, yeah, another 
defeat in the Premier League, which is starting to feel a little bit... Hmm. But, you know, it's only Leicester and Arsenal, two games that you think, hmm, you perhaps might not get a point out of. Um, but here's here's where it starts to get horrendous for me. And, and it all started at that Aston Villa home game where the ball bounced off his leg, hit his hand, and uh, we didn't get a penalty for that. But they managed to win that game 1-0. And even all the Villa fans I was speaking to, they were like thinking, how on earth did we win that game? And then that result happened that we do not speak of. Our first game in February, away at United. So we can talk about it a bit. We'll we'll talk about it as as, as much as you... I mean, I think the only thing we need to mention there is, is, is the fact that the... That challenge for Jankovic, the con- consecutively poor decisions by um, Mike Dean, and oh, who's the, who's the other guy? <sighs> Wasn't John Moss? Was it? Was that game John Moss? No, the guy with the bald head, Lee Mason. Lee Mason, that's it. Lee Mason and Horror Show, where they switch places for on the pitch referees and VAR officiating. Um, I mean, let's like. I feel. I feel like sometimes I still have to explain to people like, what go, what what the situation was before like going into that game. Of, yeah. Like we had two goalkeepers on the bench. Yeah. And we had a, after that we were depleted. It was a bench. It was a bench of under twenty ones. Like, there was there. There's you know, really really bad. And you know, and that even leaked into the starting team. Jankowicz should have never ever made his debut against Man United away at Old Trafford. Yeah, like yeah. just that's just not where you where you start your game. Like if you're two 0 up, you maybe bring him on in the 80th minute. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's just not the way. And it went. Well, we had no one else. Yeah, had no one else. Had no one else. No one else. And so, it was just a horror show. And it was just a horror show. It was a horror show. If I think that game should have ended six one. Yeah. Because you know you can't argue that that you know as bad as we were, Man United would just there for the kill really weren't they so um but yeah it should have been six one uh but no complaints on that and then after a result like that you kind of would hope that you can pick something up against newcastle away it's not a great place for us we don't seem to pick up points at at st james's park and um (laughs) we end up losing that one three two uh ultimately giving the game away early in the first half with a horrendous decision to play Jack Stevens in in right back. I mean that that for me was just like you put him in left back and he's wicked. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we we can break him down and, and they ended the game with nine players on the pitch and it was a bit of a waterlogged pitch at the end of it. But ultimately, to lose that game, that felt very low. Um, but can then we, we... Any, can we get any lower, Mike? I'm just I'm asking, can we go any lower? Well, the 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 shining light that kept us going throughout the whole season was, of course, the FA Cup, which we then went to Wolves and picked up a 2-0 win uh, in the fifth round of the FA Cup. And kind of everything felt fine, didn't it? And not only was everything fine, mate, but we had all we had to do was play Wolves again and just do that same that same score. So that's what that's what we did, right? We played them again and we won again. No, we we lost. Uh, yeah, we, I remember we... now. We uh, we did the classic thing of scoring the first and losing three points from winning positions. It's one of those horrendous statistics that we seem to have. Uh, a great goal by Danny Ings. Um, but then ultimately, we're torn apart from the 53rd minute onwards, really. Um, but I still feel that we should have got something from that. Should have got something from that. Uh, <laughs> and then we had Chelsea at home, uh, which ultimately ended 1-1. I think we were both quite pleased with that point. Well, that was the Minamino goal, wasn't it? Where he, yeah. uh, sat, where he sat down uh, with Mendy. Top stuff. Top it was stuff. a great, great uh, that, goal. Was, that was also a contender for goal of the season. Yeah, it was a good goal. It was a good goal. But th- this is one of the areas where I'm thinking, Ralph, what are you doing? Because then we go away to Leeds. Um, we're still in February. Yes, we're still in February. We go away to Leeds and completely change the system. Um, we go and play on their pitch, which is absolutely horrendous. Even Leeds fans know that their pitch is horrendous. Uh, and lose that game 3 0. Um, but we did see the most amazing challenge 
of all time from Oreo made of me. How good was that? I mean, do you have the clip of us clapping or? <laughs> yeah, we had a standing ovation on the on the live stream, didn't I we? I think that was not, not that was the first standing ovation we've ever given for anything but a goal. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely. Was, it was it, and it was so in sync. We didn't even think about it. We just stood up and clapped because it was so good. Yeah, that tackle was. that tackle alone got me in my list for player of se- player of the season. Yeah, if if only he had a chance to feature with injury, but of course he got injured in that game, which then led to all kinds of problems problems going on from that. Um, then we move into March, of which we then played Everton away, and that was just such a nothing one nil loss. We had I don't think we had a single shot on target. We did nothing. Yeah, that was that was a that was a tough game. That was. When, those were one of those games where you just like, they, but they're not just not giving anything. They're right. Just there's no no commitment there. The heads are gone, and there was a lot of that this season where it was just like these aren't even just you playing badly. This is just you not giving anything. No, no, so not. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. But then we went away to Sheffield United, thinking there's no possible way we can possibly lose this, and we get two 0 win. Um, Adams. It's got that absolute <laughs> wonder goal. Um, and Nathan Teller winning a penalty there. Um, so, papering over the cracks, maybe, and, and sort of, you know, giving us a long awaited win. That was our first win in the Premier League since January. Yeah. So, that's how bad it was. I mean, that run was absolutely horrendous. It's disgusting, mate. Like I said, I was looking earlier on at like our season performances, and it was just red, red, yellow, green, yellow, yellow, green, 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 red. Yeah, just so much red. It just all at once. It's just terrible. I mean, can you imagine what the fan base would have been like had we not been in the FA Cup? Yeah, it would have been pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> pretty, pretty bad. Absolutely horrendous. Uh, but then normal service resumed. We go away to Man City, who were on fire at the time. Yeah, that's not. And... That's, that, that's not a game. I think we everyone in that game walked in going right off. Don't worry about it. But you know what? I mean, we went into that game. We didn't have Ings wasn't fit for that, was he? And we had to change the system up completely. And we played. We played every single centre back we had, and we put Jack Stevens in a number six role. Yeah, I remember that. <clears throat> and Jack Stevens, a, a bit of a lost lamb, but it was fine. But we did we score? No, we didn't score first in that. We equalised James Ward Prowse with the penalty. Um, but ultimately, it was four. It was four one at half time, and the game ended. Oh no, no, no! It's three one at half time. And the game ended five two, so I mean it was. <laughs> I mean it's never good to lose five two, but if you're going to lose five two, it looked pretty good from our compared side. To, compared to the five two against Spurs, yeah, night and day, yeah, night and day, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then <laughs> the worry for me really sitting on the game against Brian at home, um, because that was just horrible performance. I mean, th- if we had to put worst game of the season in this list, actually that was worse than yeah, that, yeah, that was um again, I remember coming out of that game and we all were just going that was worse than the nine nil. That was mm. that was Brighton. How do you how do you play like that against Brighton? Like Yeah. Yeah. Disgusting have, performance. Have some, have some respect for yourself. Do you know what I mean? Not to not not being I know that sounds really harsh to Brighton and the Graham Potter, but you know we, they're a South Coast team. And there's no South Coast derby unless it's Portsmouth, but there's still a little bit of a point to prove in my mind. It's just like, yeah, you know, listen, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then again, after that, we had the, the FA Cup that, that ultimately was the beaming light in all of this. Um, go away to Bournemouth uh, and win 3 0 and get ourselves into the semi finals of the FA Cup. So, everyone's feeling generally very, very happy. Um, with the fact that we're still in the cup doing things. So, um, again, was the shining light in, in all of this. Um, and then after that, actually, we had that, that 3 2 win against Burnley. Yeah. But we came back from two goals down. Which was uh, Mike's nomination for game of the season. It was my nomination game of the season, which was overturned by you guys. 
Damn it, guys. <laughs> ruining, ruining Mike's plans. <clears throat> no, but rightly so. Rightly so. Um, mine, mine came at a happier time of the season as well. That's why I think it was. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, and then we're away at West Brom before that semi final of the FA Cup. So both clubs had lost their league games before that semi final. But in the way that we lost that game against West Brom, oh my goodness. That was bad. It was very bad. That was um, the, I, the biggest thing I remember that week is we lost West Brom. And the next day I was reading a book. Uh, about the history of Premier League football, and the next chapter that I read was all about Sam Allardyce and how good he is. And yeah. I just sat there so depressing I, I, that I, I, I actually gave up on that book because I, like, I need some time away from this. <laughs> You'd be so upset that you feel that to me is the next chapter. I'd leave it alone. Yeah, it was such a poor performance. We were completely Allardyce. It was just made a relegated West Brom look like they had a chance of fighting, and when no other team gave them that chance. It was yeah. just, just awful, just rubbish. Yeah. So I've been talking about games that featured in March, and actually that was in April. So there we go. Uh, in we fact, the Burnley April? game. Burnley game onwards was it was April. Sorry about that. So got lost got track. The, you got April in the bottom corner there. Oh, I have now. I just changed it. Oh, it wasn't not looking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then, of course, we the semi final lost to Leicester. Who were eventual champions, um, were eventual winners of the FA Cup. Um, so you know, felt kind of and how good of an FA Cup final was it? To be fair to them, you know, yeah, it was you know, it's great to see underdogs win it if we can call them that. I don't know, but but for me, that that semi final loss, we just we just did nothing, just did nothing, and it killed me. The fact that we were so close to getting European football, do we have the squad that permits it? I don't know, I don't think so. Um, but it would have been nice to see Ralph get European football. Uh, and then on from that, in the week, we had the game away at Spurs, um, taking the lead in that game. Danny gets injured. Systems are changed. Diallo gets brought on. Prousey and Armstrong get separated, and we end up losing that game 2-1. Uh, but Salisu in, in the left-back position looked great, um, but I just really got frustrated in that game. Because ultimately we changed the method of the play, so hey ho, it happens. We've only got three games. Let's talk about now. This is long. <laughs> this is long, isn't it? The last one was fun. This one's just I don't know how much we lost. Yeah, especially <laughs> talking about twenty twenty one as well. It's 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 hard. God. Uh, so rattling through these, uh, Southampton uh, were then up against Leicester at home. We had that Vestergaard red card, but ultimately took the 1 1 result, felt like a win. Then we're away at Liverpool, uh, losing 2 0. Um, probably a fair result, uh, looking at the chances that were made. Uh, and then we had back to back wins with um, moving on into May. Back to back wins with. Uh, Crystal Palace at home, winning that game 3-1. And then uh, a few days later, winning um, 3-1 against Fulham. And then on to that home game against Leeds United that we went on to. Yeah, uh, I remember that game. It was great. Which we lost 2-0. And then ending the season away at West Ham with just a nothing 3-0 expected... Thank goodness we didn't have to go to the London Stadium to watch this. Yeah, <laughs> that was the main outcome for everyone. Was, thank God we didn't have to go to that. Exactly. I'm so glad it was only West Ham fans that, that were able to go to that one because that would have been a, a horrible tube ride home uh, from that one. So there we go. That was the 2021 season review. Now, Jack, if you were to give this season a mark out of 10, what would you give it? Four. 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 Wow. A reach, we reached amazing heights, and you can't. That first half of the season, it was so amazingly good. If, if we were ranking it on that first half of the season, it would probably be a 10. I'd probably give our first half of the mm. season an eight or a 10. Yeah, eight, nine, 10. That's where you give it. And yeah. You would give that second half a zero. It was god awful. It was terrible. Yeah. It was relegation fodder. It was just not good. So I feel like four was a good aggregate. <laughs> Yeah, because the, the 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 second half of the season was so bad 
that not only did it take away from what we did the first half, but it almost made you forget about what we did the first half. It, more, like, it was so the opposite of being top of the league. It wasn't mm-hmm. even funny anymore. So, yeah, a four. And it, just, it was just a hard one. But the entire time that it was happening, I had this understanding in my head of why it was happening. Yeah. And it was only really the last probably last five or six games where the squad was pretty much back to full full burst minus uh, Romeo and Smallbone mm-hmm. and Abafemi. That And then when we, we were still losing matches, that I was like, this really sucks because you're all there to put in a performance right now and there's some of you that aren't doing it. And, that, and like, you know, like you say, that, it's that picture of Redmond and that, uh, 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 against the West Ham game. You look at that, it's so offside, hands on his hips, not in the game. And you look at that and you're like, that's it. That's the problem with us right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think if I was to give a, a score out of 10, I'd be slightly more favourable. I'd give it a 6. And and I think, you know, in terms of, the, it's like you say, the, what's given it extra points for me is the fact that that first half of the season was exceptional in the sense of going so long uh, without defeats. I mean, with, like not losing a game for two months in the league. That's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. And, you know, it's not like we're a side that draws a lot of games anymore. You know, back to the 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 Puel era, we, we effectively had the most draws in, in the entire campaign, but we're, we're not a club that, that has that anymore. So to, to not lose a game for that amount of time was fantastic. But also the extra points come from me, like recently thinking... Does Ralph have a plan B? Because, you know, the fact of how good we were in the first part of the season was a case of all the Premier League managers were looking at go, oh, that's what they do. Ah, oh, I see. And then nullifying everything we do, forcing Ralph to, to think of a, a new method to do so. You know, just thinking about those games against West Brom away, looking at Brighton at home, all those games where effectively we just look ragged. We just look yeah. completely lost and totally out tactified by the likes of Graham Potter and, you know, no disrespect to Graham Potter, I think he's, he's a great coach, does what he does, um, but to be Sam Allardyce was rough, very rough. So... What it does give me is a clear sign of what we need to do in the summer. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, all all season, I've sort of been on Ralph's, in Ralph's defence saying, you know, we the, the, the bad run of form, you can see why it was we were so plagued by injuries. I know like you'll hear of Arsenal, fans, you know, sorry, Liverpool fans being like so weird. I was like, yeah, but look how much it hindered your season, and you still had Salah, Mane, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. like all we've got is Danny Ings. All we've got is Aura Romeo in the middle, and and once you take that, all we've got is Kyle Walker Peters. We don't, we literally don't have another fullback. Yep. Like injuries completely hindered us, and then on top of that, you have all the something that we've probably have tried to block out and try to forget as much as we can. Yet we had so many awful refereeing decisions go against us this, this year, the, mm. some offside, some handballs, two rescinded red cards, unbelievable stuff, Jeff. <laughs> it was h- horrific. But didn't everyone? <laughs> no, you're right. Everyone did, but not everyone had that on top of the injuries on top of. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think the, 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 another thing that that happen, happened to everyone. So it's another thing that we can is is transfers. You look at the the you know our, our summer transfer window. We, you know Diallo was second choice because of the visa issues. Mm. You know uh, we you know we we were going. You know we were going in for fullback. You know we were talking to Brendan Williams and we were talking to Nathan Miles and we were talking to all these players that didn't go through because the transfer window was so much more competitive, hard, and full of red tape than ever before. Yeah. That we found it very easy to offload some players, to offload quite a lot of players, and then we realised, oh my god, we cannot get any of the things that we need. Mm. But it's too late because we've now offloaded all of these players. Doesn't, and then when it gets to Vokins and Valerie, that to me seems like one of those decisions where I've just forgot to switch off at the transfer list. Like if there was like a <laughs> there was like a FIFA or a football manager to thing where you've just like, oh, I put them up for sale because I was clearing the squad. But then I just forgot to take them off, and I, and I cleared the squad too much. Yeah, like it was. It you was sold them. Much. You did what? Why? Why? <laughs> Why have we done that? Oh, they were you on said... your list. They're on my list. My list. Oh, okay. 
I'm sorry. Did, did you anybody think to update this list after we found out the transfers? And no, we just kept on going. All right, okay. Uh, so they're just things that that we like. We all know need to know and learn. And I feel like Ralph does learn his lesson. He does. I mean, look how much earlier he's making substitutions now. Look at the Leicester game. You know, Vestergaard went off. How he just he just changed the squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowing now that you know Stevens can play. On that in that right back right back position, but also can play number six and can be a bit more valuable in his role if he's. But we can't just rely on him. Yeah, you know we need we need a summer where we keep Vestergaard and we keep Ings and we keep, you know those. We just need to keep those two and we can get rid of, you know, Red Redmond can go like you say Diallo could probably go. Um, I would I don't I don't get why people hate are hating on Minamino so much. I would love Minamino to come on us for come on to us on a full. So mm. you know there 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 are things that need to happen in this club and there are players that we need to get in and actually make a squad again and have a squad. Yeah. We just didn't have a squad. We had a team, but we didn't have a squad. Yeah. And there was so long that we were we, that we went without knowing what our team selection was. You know, but like last season it was just like I don't I don't have a clue what team he needs to start. Well yeah. now we know what team he needs to start. Yeah. Now, if those any of those players are injured, we are stuffed because we, there's nothing it? behind us. No, yeah, absolutely right. I mean, I think the, the what really made that quite visible is the fact that a lot of the fan channels are literally giving up on doing their particular eleven because they just look like no idea, no idea, who knows, no idea. And um, but you know, in in terms of seeing how how limited we are in, in some of those positions, effectively, there's no competition for places and. <laughs> Uh, and you know the, the times where effectively goes we know what the team is this is what's coming it, it went well and then when we get a point against Chelsea at home and we're unfortunate not to not to get the win everything changes for that Leeds game you know it's just like oh, why you know it's mix that thing of when, I, when I look when I, all I have to do is the way I, the way you, ha- you have to look at it is what sort of position is the club in itself and then you and like are you happy with that and it's like well, yeah if if Ralph has been is backed, I feel we can get, we can go far. We do what everything that Ralph wants to do, and you look at ha- at what that is, which is the first half of the season. Yeah, be so excited, and then and but the, not, but the club knows its limitations and it knows what it can do now. But at the same time, it also knows what it wants to achieve and what it can achieve. Yeah. So that's why this summer is quite a big one for us. I know that everyone's going to say, you know, you know, we all want Joe out and go out, and you, you're not wrong. But, so, but he wants out, and the club also wants him out. But, but they're not going to sell it with the club no. on on a whim or for any other reason. And, and to be fair, Southampton, when you listen to the fan forums, it, it, it seems to work differently than, than any other. You know, it, it is, the, the, club, the club is one thing, and the ownership just funds that. The ownership is a sponsor. It, it is just an investment. Yeah. So you know, you, you can hate on him as much as on Gal as much as you want, but I think we all know what the limits are. It's not like we've got an owner that's got bad intentions or wants to do bad things to us. No. It's just that he openly is like, listen, guys, like this is not what I want to be doing anymore because my country told me to go and do this. Now do not want me to do this. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what you're getting. It's like, okay, let's do what we can with that. Yeah, and he's he's not taking any money out of the, the club. He, he's, you know, arguably made a made a loss. You know, it's not been the, the greatest investment <laughs> for him. So you know what? What do we want to do? I mean, it could, you could turn up on our front doorstep and say it might drop by the club for a fiver, and then we'd be even in more trouble. You know, it's just a case of finding the right owners, uh, which which ain't easy to do at the moment. I mean, football's on its knees. I mean, that's the whole. Yeah. If the likes of Barcelona and Real Madrid and Juventus are so desperate for additional investment in this European Super League thing, then that's got to show you something. What's going on with the rest of the league? You know that are really struggling in terms of making things yeah. meet. So um, it's. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if going forward you'll see like a, I, I, like a, just a different format. So I don't feel like there'd be like I feel there'd be like maybe partial ownerships and stuff like that. More of a, mm. a collect a collective wealth, but a collective a, a collection of actual personal wealth. They don't want anybody to borrow to buy the club, which is what that guy from Lille was talking about. Um, you know that that's not what we need. I think from the way that it, it sounds, they're looking for maybe five or six investors who want to invest in it and actually want to put money into it yeah. rather than a solo ownership because the club runs itself the, the, the club runs itself and it just it takes money and that's that's that we are we're in a good position for that yeah. so the club itself I'm I don't think that, I don't think there's any any real worries it's just we need to get busy we need to 
to make the most of the money that we spend. Yep. And I feel like we need to spend at least one 20 mil player this summer. I know that sounds, <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but, and we do, and everything is usually five to, five to six, but I feel like we need to get one, like, sign in, sign in. Yeah. Whether it's, um, or, you know, there's a couple that I've seen where it's that, if it's that, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, there's a left back at Frankfurt. Um, I cannot remember the life of his name is, but he, he sort of plays left back, left midfield, uh, can put, put push into the middle. He's, he's, he's He's fantastic. I can, for the life of me, I can't remember what his name is right now. Yeah. Give me two seconds and give it get a talk, and I'll see if I can find him. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. Well, um, you know, just looking over in the in the chat section, Tristan's just jumped up here. Um, uh, hopefully, we'll get Ings to sign the contract. I mean, that's still open at the moment. Uh, he's got one year left on his contracts. There, there's always going to be chat of him maybe moving on to a club that can give him Champions League football. So depending on how it goes with the con- uh, conversation with Harry Kane going to Manchester City. We'll, ha- we'll have to wait and see. Jack, uh, have you got Philippe, a name? Uh, Philippe Kos- Kosic. Kos- Kosic. He's a sweet... Oh, yeah. uh, you know, he's, uh, he's, he, he's friends with, uh, with Tadic, I do believe. Oh. In that, in that, in that Serbia squad. Do so, Tadic. Oh, oh, oh. You know, uh, 14 goals in 97 games in, for... Uh, for back, he's got he's got he's got lots of game. I think his assists are off the charts as well. He's a wicked crosser of the ball, which when I look at the squad, that's kind of something that we miss. It's someone to bomb down the wings and cross a, cross a decent ball in on the left yeah. with his left peg. We need a le- like we need that opposite side to Prowse, someone someone else to take the corners yeah. on the other side because I don't like War Prowse's out swinging corners. Yeah, absolutely. Someone like uh, you know maybe Bertrand three or four years ago. Exactly. Exactly. That's what we. That's what we need. We need to we need to make place that that one heavy signing that would just confirm the back. And we had that back line of Kyle Walker, Peters, uh, Bednarak, Vestergaard, and you know, let's say Felipe Kostic. You know, this wicked Serbian hard striker that can power forward and do stuff. That's yeah. wicked if all of those players are playing on their best day. And you know, those two in the middle are better when the wings are sorted and safe, and they don't have to venture out. They can just concentrate on what they have to do. Yeah. <laughs> Madness. Um, just a comment here from Joe. Here's a stat. We've lost more games this season than we did when we went down in 2005. Wow. That's a mad stat. It is a mad stat. But I guess we've won more games. <laughs> Thank goodness. And we didn't have. Uh, have so many so many draws. But um, but yeah, we, I think we were the team that, that lost the most points from winning positions as well. We, we topped that table. I think Spurs were up there as well. Um, yeah, it's so Jack's going for a four out of ten. I'm going for a six, but um, hey, we, hey, we meet in the middle and call it a five. Let's call it a five. Yeah, that you know what? That's perfect for this season because half of it was decent, half of it was rubbish. That, that in the middle, yeah, yeah, five, five. Yeah, let's go with that. Fantastic. Well, we've been chatting for two hours now, Jack. Yeah, it's felt that long, and that <laughs> this bit has. This bit has. I was out. You know, the awards were very fun. I had a suit jacket on. It was all good. The awards were great. Fantastic. So there I'll we go. What, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll cheer us all up. I'll cheer us all up. Don't worry about it. What are you going to do with your green screen? Re- rewind. <laughs> re- re- rewind. And for all those who've, who've stayed on can get a, a close up of me lifting this glorious trophy. And a nice trophy. We'll never win that. I remember this kit. I love this kit. I need to buy this kit. Still can't find this kit. I'll send it to you in a minute. It's about, I'm sure it's about 500 quid. On Good faith. Good faith. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'd love, my I'd love to see the recreation of that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it's been a long one. An hour and four minutes. My goodness. Oh. But um, but I think going forward, we, we've got a few things in, in the pipeline. Uh, we have a, a few interesting conversations with interesting parties. So hopefully I have more to tell you more about that in the weeks to come. Um, I think in this kind of Euros are coming up, we might be doing something for the Euros. Uh, we'll also be looking at perhaps doing some of the ranking of other clubs and see if we can get uh, rank the uh, other 20 Clubs in the Premier League for the 21 21 campaign. I guess and, uh, what we really have to do, I guess what we, the next video we should probably make is going over our league predictions. 
Yeah, it's a rough one, isn't it? Wednesday night, yeah. Tatsuya, Wednesday night. Yeah, so yeah, well, I'll, I'll, we'll sort that out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how poor our punditry really is. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. But uh, but there we go. Thanks to everyone who's joined us on this this live review of the season. Um, it's a big adventure. I, I, I couldn't be bothered to edit something if I'm brutally honest. Um, and I thought it'd be much better to do it live and then we could just chat about it and uh, get your thoughts in the chat section as well, which is way more fun than doing it that way. So, exactly. Yeah, no one seems to only see some sleek transitions today. So, there we go. Fantastic. Well, thanks to everyone who's joined us in the chat session. Thanks to everyone who's joined us for this and also the award show. If you haven't seen the award show yet, go back and have a watch of that um, and see what you make of our. Uh, awards for the season um like i said we'll be back probably next week um with some more content based around the season ahead and also the year is coming up but as always remember to like comment share and subscribe and me and jack we'll see you in the next one all right see ya Bye.